Oh, video games. A hobby many of us picked up during childhood, and one that some of us keep up to this day. I think it's safe to say we all have those few games that we reminisce about frequently and give us a great amount of nostalgia. But what about the others? The games that were so bad or so obscure that we've just blocked them out of our memories. Have no fear, because I'm here today to remind you of those lost titles that you've been trying so hard never to come back to. And we're going to start ourselves off with Drawn to Life Spongebob. If you're like me and you broke the law for fun back when you were about 8, then you probably had one of these. An R4 card. R4 cards allowed you to store a whole range of random games ripped off the internet so you could play them for free on your DS. Looking back, this isn't the most legal of practices, but as a kid it meant I played an obscene amount of different DS games, from really good to absolutely terrible. Looking down the list today, there are honestly some games I can barely remember anything about, so I think it would be interesting if over a short series of videos we went through them together, and we're gonna start off with this, Drawn to Life Spongebob. <coughs> As the name implies, the game revolves around the very famous cartoon series Spongebob Squarepants, specifically episode 4 of series 3, named Frankendoodle, in which an artist accidentally drops two magic pencils into the sea that are then found by Spongebob and Patrick, and anything that they draw comes to life. In a shock turn of events, however, Patrick accidentally draws an evil version of Spongebob, which steals his pencil and starts to wreak havoc on Bikini Bottom. Patrick and Spongebob then make quite possibly the strangest sounds ever heard by the human ear, and we're launched into the game. The game comes in two languages, English and not English. The first thing you'll notice when the game opens is the incredibly obnoxious soundtrack. Let's just slide that down a little bit. My god, I have 10 whole hours on this game. Well, let's just load up my old save file and what is that? The whole premise of this game works around the idea of the magic pencil, meaning you actually draw a lot of aspects of the game yourself as you play through. On the one hand, this is actually a really great idea, as the amount of customization encourages creativity among children playing it. But on the other hand, penis shoes. Unfortunately, the result of this is that a large portion of the game looks like it's been created in Microsoft Paint, and honestly, sometimes I can barely tell what's happening. My main character seems to be some sort of deformed skeleton, and the houses I've drawn are just awful. I feel particularly sorry for anyone who has to live in this. Maybe if you're decent at drawing, this isn't such a problem, but coming back to this game about 10 years later, I honestly didn't understand what anything was. Enough of that though, the real question is, how is the gameplay? Well, it's actually a pretty decent platformer to be honest. My list of locations isn't massively expansive, Bikini Bottom, Jungle and Deep Sea are the only options that I've got so far, but I think there's a couple more that I haven't unlocked. I'll just pick jungle for now. Upon loading in, there's a couple things to outline. These things, in the corner here, these black boxes with mushed up penguin faces inside them, are actually my lives. As you travel through each level, you'll find bits of ink, presumably left by evil Spongebob, that you have to erase using the DS pen. Around these clumps are a multitude of different enemies. Now you can't fault the game makers for variety here, but you certainly can for design. I mean, that is literally Fred Flintstone as a fish. Another feature of each level level of these canvases which prompt you to draw different tools to help you get through each level. This is actually quite a nice little feature and it makes the otherwise samey level design feel slightly more entertaining. You can eventually get your own car too, and there are a few specialised levels involving creating a spaceship and roller coaster that look quite fun. On top of that, there's a couple of epic moves you can pull out, such as this downward slam, that's quite good, and when you complete a level, your character actually pulls off a sweet backflip before being kidnapped by a giant arm. I think one of the best parts is probably the boss battles. The designs for each boss, or although still really weird looking, are actually quite varied and the gameplay becomes more complex. It's a bit like Dark Souls really. Actually in many ways I, I would say Dark Souls is basically just a rip off of Drawn to Life Spongebob. Overall, I think I would give this game a solid 5 out of 10. That could be a little harsh, I feel like the game does have a certain amount of charm to it, especially if you watched a lot of Spongebob back in the day because there's a lot of interaction with characters from the original show. The whole concept of creating your own weapons and characters by drawing them yourself would I'm sure be really fun if it was just a little better executed. I'd like to say I recommend this game, but at the end of the day, it's just a little bit boring. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here, how can I save this? Uh... Oh, uh, Squilliam's in the game. Yeah. 